What's up guys, it's Dwayne, back again for another video, back again for another reaction, and today's a great, wonderful, beautiful day. Do you know why? Yes, you know why. Because it's a Sweden day. Iconic Swedish foods you need to try before you die. Without further ado, let's get into this reaction. Let's go. If you love delicious cakes, pastries, and fresh seafood, you should know that those IKEA meatballs are just the start of what Swedish cuisine has to offer. We're sure you're more than familiar with the concept of Swedish meatballs, whether you've had them foisted upon you by a cocktail waiter at some formal event or sampled some while browsing furniture. So good. I have yet to have any Swedish meatballs because in my friggin' IKEA, <laughs> <laughs> they don't serve Swedish meatballs. It doesn't make any sense, guys, why in my IKEA they don't, but they don't. Um, and I've never tried one, and I cannot wait to try them. And I had, like, comments in my comment section before when I did about Swedish meatballs, and they were like, you can make them, here's a recipe. Guys, I do not want to make them. I want to try the real thing, <laughs> and then after, I will try and make them. But I, wanna, I don't want to attempt to make something I've never tasted before. So I want to go to Sweden and taste it. And I can wait. I can wait to get the real thing furniture at Ikea. After all, more than 2 million meatballs are eaten daily at Ikea's stores worldwide, wow. meaning many of us have already tried the iconic shot boulard during our lives. One of the best aspects of shot boulard, or Swedish meatballs, is the immense variety of ways in which it can be prepared. There doesn't appear to be much in the way of hard and fast rules required to categorize or define Swedish meatballs. Frankly, the only required ingredient for shot boulard, according to the Swedish Institute, is love. Actually, there is one uh. other prerequisite to enjoying a truly authentic Swedish shot boular, lingonberries, which are served on the side. For me, the meatball is so much the IKEA culture. It's convenient, it's Swedish, and pretty much for everybody. I like that. Some may call the Swedish food kanekebrad a crisp bread. Others, not unreasonably, may choose to classify it. It looks like a uh, rye bread. It looks like cracker. Like, we call them Rivita in the UK, and we have these. I think I've tried them before. They're quite healthy, right? They're quite low in calories. I think my mum used to eat them and spread stuff on them. Buy it as a cracker. Setting semantics aside, this relic from historically impoverished times in Sweden has remained a staple because it is easily stored, has a long shelf life, and offers immense versatility. Kanekebrod can be enjoyed as a snack or as part of a meal and is an often included addition to Swedish smorgasbords throughout the year. When you consider it can be topped with any variety of delectable items, both sweet and savory, from pickled herring to jelly, it's obvious why this crisp bread has endured for roughly 500 years. For anyone doubting the veracity of Kanekebrod's claim as an iconic Swedish food, don't just take our word for it. Take it from IKEA. Alongside its beloved meatballs, the company also sells Kanekebrod. If we're being honest, no other Swedish food may be easier for the U.S. palate to handle than Pana, which is essentially Pitty just Pana. a meat and potato breakfast hash made with leftover food items. The simple we have something very similar a breakfast hash made out of food leftovers we have something in england um especially in north i think all actually the whole of england called bubble and squeak which is basically leftover sunday dinner so like roast potatoes meat vegetables all mushed into like a patty fried i mean it's like a hash brown kind of patty um similar to this, I think. Simplicity of Pitipana makes it a yeah. clear winner in homes throughout Sweden. Who can resist the simple... Yeah, kind of, yeah, kind of like that. But maybe a bit more mushed and formed and fried together. I'll show you a picture. Give me a second. Yeah, so basically something like this, which actually looks quite similar to what was shown on that screen. So maybe Bubble and Squeak and your dish are quite similar in origin. Maybe. Who knows? But yeah, they do look very similar, don't they? Simple yet delicious combination of eggs, potatoes, and meat. Not only does Pitipana contain a flavor profile suited to U.S. taste preferences, it is also fairly easy to prepare. It involves little more than sautéing everything but the eggs in a single pan before frying the eggs separately to place on top of the dish. Trying Pitipana should be on any list of iconic Swedish foods to try. It's often credited as being one of the dishes that define Swedish home cooking. And it's no wonder. It's warm, hearty, versatile, and a complete win. Frankly, the idea of a sandwich cake can be tough to wrap your head around. So is the entire notion of a savory cake, which... 
Wait, what? A savory cake? It looks like a sandwich. Like, it's got layers of bread and, like, stuff in the middle. It looks like a sandwich that's been layered. And then, like, maybe, like, some sort of, like, uh, cream cheese or something. Or some type of, um, I don't know, yogurt or something spread over the top of it. And layered with vegetables. And that's like a cake. A of a sandwich cake. cake can be tough to wrap your head around. So wow. is the entire notion of a savory cake, which is what smorgasorta is. Of course, since a cake is nothing more than a vessel to contain a combination of flavors, it's no surprise that cakes can work with savory ingredients. Wow. As long as you can get over any initial reservations, you'd do well to try this savory sensation from Sweden before you die. And while it I have to try that, it looks really good. May not resemble any sandwich you're used to seeing, there's something to be said for experiencing something completely unexpected. Part of the appeal of Smorgastorta is that it's served cold. Is she saying it right? I don't think she said it's Smorgastorta. I don't think it'd be like that. Smul smulgus, smulgus, starter, something like that. I it'll, be, it'll be somewhere else. It'll be with, there'll be some sort of tone in it. The way she's saying it, I just know that's incorrect. Let me know in the comment section. Hold, which allows for preparation well in advance of any guests arriving to devour your beautiful concoction. Wow. It's also easier to prepare. Th Look at that. That's a work of art. Wow. Than its intimidating presentation would suggest. Sweden That's has so been cool. a sovereign nation since 1523, and with such a long history, it's not surprising that many Preparing. traditional foods have remained prevalent through the years. Even though modern culinary capability. The stinky fish. <laughs> The stinky fish. Ladies have rendered moot some preserved items such as pickled herring. Despite the seemingly unappealing appearance and the notion of pickled herring, it remains an essential component of Swedish smorgasbords. As noted in the book, Treasured Recipes of Our American and Swedish Kitchens, pickled herring ranks as the most important of all Swedish smorgasbord dishes. All the others okay. can be or not be, but the herring is a must item. It may seem odd to enjoy herring prepared through pickling, but according to Visit Sweden, this centuries-old method of extending a freshly caught fish's shelf life proved both cost-effective and tasty. And with such a long track record of satisfying Swedes, the continued popularity of pickled herring proves the old notion. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. And it looks good. It looks like it's got a lot of flavour. I feel like the flavour is very strong. If it's pickled, then it'll be like a bit, a bit citrusy, a bit lemony, a little bit... Uh, vinegary maybe um, and I feel like it's gonna be very salty don't know why I just got a feeling could be wrong Lutfisk is of course the almost unbelievably Lutfisk. odd dish that's famous or rather infamous Lutfisk. as a traditional holiday meal in Nordic communities throughout the it looks like cod Midwest. And while Lutfisk's origins clearly lie in Scandinavia, it may actually be more popular with Swedish immigrants and their descendants in the US than with native Swedes according to Smith is that true? Is Ludfisk, is it more popular in America than it is in Sweden? Do you guys eat that in Sweden? Let me know. Sonian. The borderline poisonous preparation technique for Lutfisk involves preserving Poison. cod in lye. Yes, lye, as in the corrosive chemical often used in cleaning. Use of lye in preparing Lutfisk okay. results in a gelatinous final product that emits a near suffocating fishy stench. Preparing and eating any food product in such a way may seem dangerous, okay. but it's been done for a long time and serves as a powerful symbol. Once prepped, preserved, and eaten out of necessity, it's now a way to look back on ancestral foods and literally taste how far we've come. And yes, okay. there's a good chance Lutfisk is a dish you're not likely to. <laughs> that kid's like, Ugh, don't put that in my mouth. What is that? Like gelatin, 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 gelatin fish. Ew. Love, but given its unique history, preparation, and taste, texture, smell combination, it's something worth trying when you have the chance, even just once. You know, I always say, well, your t when your taste buds die, well, then, then you like lutefisk. The origin okay. of some traditions can be easy to trace. Astrupa ok pancako. Did I say that right? History has recorded just why things started, who started them, and why those precise things or something close to it continues to pop up over and over. Tradition is tradition. But the passage of time often obscures the truth about how something started. This is particularly true when talking about food duos that seem made for each other. One of those duos is Sweden's traditional Thursday lunch. Our that looks like pancakes. 
Oh, so in the UK, we have pancakes. So our pancakes are not like American pancakes. They're like this type of pancake, like a crepe, like what they call crepe or whatever in France. Um, just like this, maybe powdered sugar, maybe with cream. Is that jam? We have something like this. Yeah. Our Chopo Ochpen Kokor. That we don't know where or how this classic combo was created doesn't diminish its appeal or ability to satisfy. Perhaps akin to grilled cheese and tomato soup in the U.S., our Chopo Ochpen Kokor has... Is she saying that right? Or maybe I said it completely wrong then. ...been a simple and consistent staple in Sweden for ages. It is served everywhere in Sweden at lunchtime on Thursdays. How it became such a staple remains unclear. There are a number of explanations offered for the place of Archopo Ochpankokor in Swedish culture, including being derived from military customs or emerging from religiously imposed dining restrictions. But when you're dipping your pancake into that perfect pea soup and all your worries mm. seem to melt away, does it really matter? If you're the type of person who views food and eating as a communal event... Why do they always group those two together? You know, the pancake next to the soup. Because I, I had a, I think I saw it in another video and someone said, we don't eat those together. Like they're two separate things. Um, are they normally paired together? As in you eat, you have the soup and then you have that um, sweet dish. Let me know in the comment section. Event to experience together, you need to prioritize attending an authentic craft huilva or crayfish party before you die. There, you will have a chance to try Kraftor. Given that Kraftor is simply crayfish, some of you may believe you can check this one off your list already, but to truly experience this mm. iconic Swedish seafood, you need to do so at a craft. I don't know that's that, I don't know if I could I don't, I don't know if I could have that. I'm sorry guys. That's not for me. Craft Huilva, a tradition for nearly a century, the so-called crayfish party involves plenty of Kraftor, festive hats and bibs, singing and general revelry. Additionally, there are several varieties of both salt and freshwater crayfish species in Sweden. Even without the hullabaloo of Kraft Huilva, Kraftor remains an iconic Swedish food worth trying. Sweden has one of- I mean, I, I would try it. It's just the heads and the legs. Oh, I just don't know if I would want that. On my play, I don't know. The highest life expectancies in the world, with Swedes living a whopping five years longer than people in the United States. That makes it hard to argue with the assessment that Sweden is an exceptionally that. healthy country, but there are still some Swedish desserts you need to try during your lifetime. At the top of that list is Ostkaka. The name of this delectable Ooh. dessert literally translates to cheesecake, but it's not nearly as heavy Ooh. or rich as what an American palate might be used to. That's not. That looks so. Oh, that looks delicious, guys. That looks delicious. Mm. Not to say Ostkaka is a healthy dessert option. It may not be quite as decadent as some cheesecakes, but Ostkaka isn't something that should show up on a daily meal plan. And here's the thing. Don't worry about how Ostkaka compares to U.S. desserts. Rather, just trust us when we tell you that if the opportunity presents itself, you should make a point to try it for yourself. While we do consider that. ourselves somewhat of an authority on all things food-related, we're inclined to defer to the experts whenever possible. So don't take our word that Rex Morgus, an open-faced shrimp sandwich, is an iconic Swedish food worth trying before you die. In I love shrimp, so yeah. Instead, take it from internationally renowned celebrity chef Marcus Samuelson, who once wrote on Instagram, there's nothing more Swedish or delicious as this Rex Morgus. So that's it, right? Mm. If the longtime Chopped Judge's declaration isn't enough to prompt you to seek it out, we're not sure anything else can. So unless you're less than enthralled with shrimp, or if you have a shellfish allergy, which is a fair reason to avoid it, there's little reason to think you'd be anything but- I don't but have a shellfish uh, allergy, and I'm glad I don't, because I can have all the shellfish I want. Satisfied I with this simple sandwich. With more than 2,000 miles of coastline, it's easy to understand why seafood has played such a large role in Swedish culture and cooking throughout history. After all, before the importing and exporting of foods from around the world was commonplace, you could only eat what was available to you. As a result, gravlax, or dill-cured salmon, has become a Swedish staple. Similar to pickled herring, gravlax likely originated from the need to extend the shelf life of freshly caught fish through various curing techniques, yet its subtle and light flavor had ensured it endured through the years. Who learned how to cure fish? Do you know what I mean? Like, who learned that if I put loads of salt on the fish, it would last longer? Like, we're so, so resourceful. It's amazing what human beings can do when we use our, um, our minds.
years, even when better preservation and cooking methods became available. Some may believe Gravlax is like any other cured salmon. Some may believe they've already tried Gravlax if they've eaten lox. But Gravlax is prepared with less salt than lox and incorporates sugar and dill during the curing process. In other words, okay. it's not the same. What's in a name? It's a lot if the alleged history I've of the iconic Swedish dessert Princess Torta is to be believed. Some of the facts are indisputable. And it's very pretty. And someone said it's nicer than your cinnamon buns. But I don't like marzipan. And that's all marzipan. So I would end up taking all this bit off and just eating the cake inside. So I don't think this would be my favorite thing. But they're very pretty. Indisputable. It was created by royal family tutor Jenny A. Kerstrom, and it made its first appearance under the original name Green Cake in the 1948 edition of the cookbook, The Princess Cookbook, Home Cooking and Holiday Food. And while okay. many agree that eating Princess Torta is a rare treat, its popularity may not be solely owed to its fantastic flavor. In fact, some speculate that the dessert's early rebranding from Green Cake to the more elegant princess title is largely responsible for it becoming a cultural icon. Whether or not that's true is unclear. What is known, however, is that the cake includes a signature outer layer of green-colored marzipan and has been a widely enjoyed yeah. dessert for See? decades. Occasionally, like the evolution of a culinary tradition is Send easy to that. track. Sure, the how isn't always entirely clear, but when it comes Send to why that. some foods become ingrained into a society, the answer can be quite obvious, as in the case of semla. After the nationally beloved Swedish pastry first found footing as a Send Fat that. Tuesday exclusive treat the night Delicious. before the start of Lent, the Swedish Institute says that the baked good is now commonly available every day from Christmas through Easter. So what are they? A cardamom-flavored baked bun split in half and filled with almond paste and whipped cream. I will be trying that at Christmas when I... Well, it won't be Christmas, but it'll be like... I'm thinking of coming to... Swin... 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 Swin? <laughs> Sweden and Finland. Probably next year, winter. And then everyone's saying, no, come at summer, come at summer. I'm just, I'm just not available at summer. I can't come at summer. And to be honest, I want to come in the winter because... There's loads of cool Christmassy stuff. And I just think also traveling to like, I want to see Lapland. That would be amazing in the winter time. So I just kind of, yeah, part of me wants to come in the winter. So, but then I get to try the lovely stuff like this. I can have some similar cream. Resembling a gigantic cream puff, semla can be eaten however your heart desires. According to Visit Sweden, though, the traditional method involves using the bun's top half to eat the oozing cream filling before devouring the remainder. Mm. Swedish culinary preferences tend to lean towards lighter, less rich fare. But like any rule, there are always exceptions. And the moist, uber-rich Claude Kaka or chocolate sticky cake certainly fits oh that God. bill. In a lot of ways, actually, Claude Kaka is less of a cake, per se, and more of a cake-shaped brownie. The tremendously ah. dense chocolate goodie is almost unbelievably easy to make, with a short list of ingredients that are simply mixed, poured, and ready to bake. Additionally, so slightly underbaking your Claude Kaka will lead to an eminently memorable final product, creating a gooier-than-normal center that perfectly complements and contrasts its external texture. Honestly, we're not sure how to sell you any further on Claude Kaka. Go find a slice of Sweden's chocolate sticky cake and you'll die a happy person. I have to try that. <laughs> Claude Kaka. Kaka. I don't know. Is that how you say it? I'm going to try all of these things when I come to Sweden. Let me... I'm going to log all this stuff. Honestly, I'm going to make a list. I'm going to get you guys involved, or my Patreon members involved. Link in the description. And I'm going to get them to get you guys you get, get you guys to help me plan my trip to Sweden and Finland. That is the plan. Not yet, but when it does happen, I am going to let you guys know. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Until the next one, I will see you very soon.